You have found it. It's the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video, the edition for the 23rd of December, 2025. We're two days before Christmas, and we've got a lot to talk about in the uh, last uh, 48 hours before Christmas and in the subsequent days after the uh, holiday. As promised, it was a gloomy day out there today. Uh, time lapse from Nile shows the damp conditions at the start of the day, and we had the low clouds and the fog and the mist and the drizzle, especially this morning. The afternoon was pretty just uneventful with a lot of clouds around, as expected this afternoon. I wanted to uh, show you uh, some high resolution personal weather station data. We have entered a partnership with Weather Floats, the uh, company that produces the Tempest weather stations, personal weather stations. A lot of people in our area have these weather stations. I have one of these weather stations. They're fantastic. We would really like more people to get them and we're going to we're going to have a contest, uh, I believe uh, in January for our viewers to uh, win a Tempest weather station and we have access to all of their data across our area now. These weather stations are capable of, of, of course, measuring temperatures and dew points and winds and precipitation. They also have lightning detection on them. And so we're going to have some really cool data to show you on days that the weather is particularly interesting. And, you know, rainfall amounts across the area today with our late rain and drizzle pretty uniform. We're looking at Mahoning County here, our network of weather stations around uh, Greater Youngstown. Here's Youngstown right here, downtown anyway. We have a lot of stations kind of near Mill Creek Park, another handful just south of 224, uh, closer to Poland. And yeah, everyone saw about a tenth of an inch or more, uh, or so I should say, worth of rain. Hopping up to uh, Trumbull County, we have a few stations here on the east side of Warren, down towards Niles along 422, and amounts here were pretty similar. Uh, the temperature data, some days this is going to be really interesting. Now everyone's kind of in the same boat out there today. Here's a look at our Mercer County stations. We have several lined up uh, near I-80 and a couple of Tempest owners in the northern tier of Mercer County, where it's oftentimes one of the colder spots in our television viewing area. But again, everyone's above average, kind of in the same general zone in the lower and middle 40s. So we're going to be showing this data a lot, not only on Weather for Weather Geeks, but on social media and our newscasts as well. This is great data for us to access, especially on those days, like maybe this coming Friday when we have freezing rain concerns. It'll be really interesting to plot up uh, what the local temperatures are doing, particularly in western PA, where we have the highest concern for some icing on Friday. But first things first, after the clouds all day today, the sky is going to try to clear uh, for a while tonight. Um, see this clearing out here across Michigan, northwest Ohio? That's going to try to work in over the next several, several hours. Nationwide on this 23rd day of December, though, for a lot of holiday travelers, the weather has not been super impactful. The Exception is the western U.S. We've had a fire hose aimed at uh, California in recent days. Now, this evening, California is catching a little bit of a break before rain is likely to push back in over the next handful of days. It's actually raining in Vegas this evening. This band of rain extends down into southwestern Arizona as well. You may have uh, seen some national weather reports and news reports of all the problems they're having in California. But back here at home, our Christmas this year is going to be pretty benign. Um, Weather-wise, it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride in recent years when it comes to our Christmas time weather. We had a cold Christmas in 2020. We had a snowy one. In fact, it was our snowiest Christmas day on record. The next year, it was very mild, 57. But then in 2022, we had that uh, cold front that rolled through just before Christmas, and that was a heck of a front. So we spent all day around 11 or 12 on Christmas Day back in 2022 with some snow flurries around. And then the next year, 60 degrees in 2023. It was one of the warmest Christmases on record, not the warmest. That was in 19. 19- 82, and then last year was pretty uneventful. 38 degrees. We'll be a little warmer than that this year, but uh, only by a few degrees. Uh, so all things considered, we're going to have two straight pretty uneventful Christmases after a real up and down period earlier this decade. Always one of my favorite, uh, you know, interesting weather tidbits when it comes to Christmas Day weather is our extremes were back to back years. Uh, the Super El Nino winter of 82, 83. That was a very warm winter, and Christmas Day was the warmest on record. 66 degrees but then the next year our high was one that was the highest temperature we spent most of the day below zero on christmas day in 1983 all right so our christmas eve day on wednesday is going to be a better looking day than today i think we'll have some dim sunshine i think midday maybe maybe the brightest time of the day overall that being said it's not going to be quite as mild as today a lot of us are still as of this recording in the mid 40s most of us are going to stop around 40 or so in the afternoon. And good news for those who may be wanting to get outdoors on Christmas Day. Maybe the kids want to take some new toys and things like that outdoors. Uh, this rain that's coming in as uh, Santa makes his rounds uh, will be pretty much out of here by daybreak on Christmas morning. Some light rain and some drizzle for a few hours. 
2, 3, 4, 5 a.m. especially, but by the time the sun comes up, you know, 7, 30, 8 o'clock, I think the rain's pretty much out of here. In fact, the sun's going to try to come out on Christmas Day. But then we have some trouble to talk about on Friday. Kind of hinted at this last evening, but uh, now that we're a day closer, we get into a little more detail on this. We have rain coming our way on Friday. The problem is the temperature. Aloft, the temperature will be warm enough for rain and not snow. But down here at the ground, we're going to have temperatures mostly below freezing, at least for a while on Friday. It's going to be a little bit of a race between the incoming precipitation and the rising temperatures. If the temperatures lose the race, in other words, it doesn't get above 32 before the rain arrives, then you have, of course, freezing rain. Best chance of that is probably going to be from Michigan down into far, far northeast Ohio and interior parts of western PA as well. So this is kind of what I, I did. The highest risks for impactful icing. A place like Detroit, Erie, heading down towards Altoona, maybe over towards State College in Williamsport in Pennsylvania. So if you happen to be traveling uh, into or out of Pennsylvania uh, towards our area along Interstate 80 on Friday, especially from mid-morning through mid to late afternoon, could be a trouble spot. I-79 from Mercer County up towards Erie could be another, tr another trouble spot. Now the farther south and west you are, uh, the temperatures might get above freezing. In fact, they probably will get above freezing as the rain arrives. So a place like East Liverpool and certainly over towards Canton, icing concerns are, are pretty minimal in those areas. So, you know, we're going to keep updating this forecast. But again, your travels may be a little bit impacted by some icy rain for a time uh, around the midday into the afternoon Friday with the highest impacts probably coming in interior Pennsylvania. In the meantime, yeah, this is a cold looking forecast for the final stages of 2025, this is today's 6-10 to 10 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. All the warmth is out west, colder anomalies in the east. This looks a lot different than just a handful of days ago. The modeling has really done a little bit of a, a 360. You know, the, the medium and long-range modeling has been struggling for a lot of the winter. It's been struggling to see cold until you're about a week or less out. In other words, you look at uh, whether it be the European long-range modeling or any other sets of long-range modeling, um, you know, you look out two, three, four weeks in advance, you see a lot of warm anomalies. Then as you get closer to a period, um, those warm anomalies tend to want to disappear. So the models have been struggling with that all winter. And this is a case where the modeling was pretty insistent that uh, the end of the year and the start of 2026 was not going to be all that cold. But now it looks like for a couple of days early next week, we're going to have a hard time getting out of the 20s. The wind chills are going to be in the, in the single digits. We could be talking about some accumulating lake effect and lake enhanced snow for a time, Monday into Tuesday of next week. So uh, we're not certainly done with uh, the Arctic hounds. And I think January is going to have plenty of opportunities for some cold and for some snow. I doubt January will be as cold compared to the average as most of December has been. But uh, even a typical January, of course, is a cold January because January is, climatologically speaking, the coldest month of the year. That's it for me this evening, and I am off the next couple of days. Hope you and yours have a, a, a very merry and safe Christmas. Uh, we'll return for a, a fresh edition of Weather for Weather Geeks early next week. We'll do a couple of videos before the new year. We'll wrap up 2025 and uh, take a fresh look at uh, what the opening stages of the new year have in store for Eastern Ohio and Western Pennsylvania. So again, thank you for watching, and have a great rest of your Tuesday night.